Okay, guys. Let me fix it. There we go. I'm here for Q&A number six. Four weeks out from the meet. And I'm excited about it. But let's jump right into these Q&A questions. And this one was too juicy to pass up. So I'm going to get right into it. Number one. How do you feel about the fact that you killed your old beautiful deadlift and got much weaker, not hating, you used to be my favorite power lifter? That is from Pentelis Lou. Oh, that's a great one. Um, so the fun thing about this, guys, is everybody remembers that 920 pound deadlift when Nick Wright came to film from uh, two years ago. It was actually two years ago, right about this time. And that has been the biggest blessing and a curse of my life as far as lifting. Because the problem with that pull was it was on pound plates that are completely inaccurate. Plates in my gym are way off. They're all over the place. And pound plates are so much easier to pull on than calibrated plates. And so that whole thing was like fun because it was 920 pounds. And it got me a lot of exposure and people still like reference that video all the time as far as how they found me and that's the most I've ever pulled but it's a curse in the fact that now that I pull on calibrated plates or the fact that we pull on calibrated plates in a meet everyone references that as if it's like the end all be all when I have zero interest in training on pound plates or pulling more on pound plates because it's gonna make me pull less in the meet so when I pulled that 920 I pulled like 865 that meet or something like that the, uh, right at the, or I think I pulled 848, 865, I don't remember, something like that at Boss of Bosses. So that was significantly less. And this is why it's just so frustrating at times when people are always like, oh man, are you ever going to beat that? And it's like, it's not even the same thing. Like, go pull, what you pull on a meat, go pull on calibrated plates all the time. Or tell me your best meat pull. That's what matters. So really, the only interest I have is in pulling 410 kilos, 904 in a meat. If I pull 904 in a meat on calibrated plates, that will blow the 920 out of the water. And I'm gonna be honest, that's what I'm shooting for here. That's what I have planned, that's my big goal. So it's crazy to me when I hear this stuff because people just don't understand. And I get like not everybody's used calibrated plates or competed, but it's just a whole different ball game. Um, so since then, my best meat pull, my best pull ever on calibrated plates is 870.8, .8, which is 395 kilos. Um, and I would say that's probably tougher than 920 on pound plates. Uh, so that's just, it's an interesting thing that people still bring up. Um, and the other thing we gotta mention, I used to blast Trent all the time. I take Trent for every meat. I don't take Trent anymore. It's been like over a year um, approximately like a year and a half since I last took a trend. Trend's the only thing that messes with my head, uh, changes my personality, things like that. So it's the, the one thing I will not use. Um, but it's just kind of crazy. Like, And the other thing, my best total was January of last year, 2100, which that was the strongest I've ever been. So it's been about, what, we're at about 19 months now coming up on um, for my strongest ever. But the problem, this is the problem with powerlifting, and people, it's always, what have you done for me lately? So when I see these guys who never get weaker ever, and they're always pulling near max weights year round or hitting the same weights, that's because they're cycling year round. And the problem with that is you burn yourself out, which I'll get into later on. So, because there's a similar question as far as that. But uh, I, just, I just had to touch on that because that's another pet peeve of mine. Um, it's not really like insulting. I'm just annoyed that people don't understand the difference. So that's that's kind of how I feel about that. It's like, I don't care what you can hit in the gym. Show me your meat numbers. That's what matters. Um, and for people who compete, you get it. But it's just, it's kind of frustrating. Because I've gotten that a lot before. And people, uh, I think I use it as a chip on my shoulder in some ways. Because people think I'm like washed up now. And that gets annoying. Um, whereas I pride myself on the longevity in this game. Like I see all the guys, a lot, a lot of the guys I used to compete with who were at the top years ago aren't even doing this anymore. And I'm still going at it. So it's like, I pride myself on that longevity, but um, oh, it's just, it's one of my pet peeves. Number one, this is actually number two. How strong was the strongest untrained or relatively untrained person you've ever seen or known of from Sealed Chamber? And honestly, no one like good came to mind because I haven't been around people who haven't trained. 
Like I've never seen people just come in the gym and lift weights. But one thing I remember from my early days at the very first Madtown Fitness location, um, when there were like 50 members, was John Hack power clean 315. And the form wasn't good. He power cleaned 315 with bad form, but he like just did it like it was no big deal. And he was still like, this is the thing about John Hack, he's like never gained weight in the last five, six years. Um, um, that's kind of a joke, he's gained like 15 pounds, but still. He was like 180 pounds, or 175, and he was power cleaning 315 when he never trained the Olympic lifts. And I'm just like, what is this about? So I, I remember John Hack, and this is fitting because he's gonna break the all-time Wilkes this weekend at the uh, tribute meet. His Wilkes will surpass Eric Lillybridge for the all-time greatest Wilkes for men in sleeves. Uh, but anyway, he's gonna total like 2050. But anyway, I remember John when he would just come up to me at the University of Wisconsin and he, no one knew a thing about him and he just was like looking up to me as this guy, um, this younger guy, and now look where he's at. So it's crazy to see how far people come. Number three, what are the biggest reasons you think people stop getting stronger from Elmo Fats? So this ties into kind of what I was saying to start off this Q&A. Biggest reasons people stop getting stronger is burnout. Mental and physical burnout. So there's two things I see. People do really well. They, they start cycling, they do really well. They hit really awesome numbers. They're feeling amazing, confidence is sky high. They, they think they can take on the world. And then they either encounter injuries and they have a much harder time or they just get burned out. Um, I see burnout all the time. When things start to finally slow down for people, a lot of them can't hold up. A lot of them can't keep going. So you have to look at this as a long-term game. Like I've been doing this 14 years and things have obviously slowed down. Like you're not always gonna be putting 100 pounds on your lifts every year or even 25. Like it's a slow freaking game. And so mentally people can't handle that or there are other things come up in life. Powerlifting gets put on the back burner. They can't train as much. Um, they don't want it as much. Uh, your hunger goes away when you become successful at other things. When you, other parts of your life are doing well, that hunger drive goes down. And this has actually happened to me. So like the hunger isn't quite as high as it was when I was in the basement and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't get a girlfriend to save my life. I couldn't do anything. I didn't have any friends. I had a huge chip on my shoulder. So I was like, F the world, I got something to prove. And now like things are going well and my life is pretty good. So the chip is much lower. I don't have that chip on my shoulder. Um, and that's one thing that drives a lot of people starting out. But a lot of people get very good but they don't get great. So I see all the time people hit really big numbers um, that would classify them as really strong, but then they hit that burnout period. And that's what separates the good ones from the great ones. So people just can't handle mentally that things are gonna slow down, the injuries are gonna crop up, and they, they basically fall by the wayside, which is why so many of the people I've competed with, so many of the people we've seen who are at the top are kind of a flash in the pan and they're gone. You see it all the time. And a lot of you guys wouldn't even know that the top guys who I would be talking about if I brought those people up. Number three, what are your unpopular opinions when it comes to lifting from Arcane CS? So it's something I've touched on before. I'm not crazy about sumo deadlifts. Um, I know it's a thing, I respect it, but it's just, it's not my preference. I wish it, everything just had to be conventional. Um, but I have nothing against sumo. I coach a million people who pull sumo, really good sumo pullers. So it's just, that's one thing, I just prefer conventional, obviously because I'm better at it too. So I'm saying right now I'm biased, it's a biased opinion, but that's just my opinion. My second unpopular opinion would probably be, I don't think some of these uh, federations are legit at all. Um, <laughs> I, I think you need to walk out your squats. I think there need to be high standards, higher standards as far as judging. Um, I think for the most part, People who are on, who are competing tested should do USAPL, um, and I think if you're competing untested, you should probably do USPA primarily. Uh, as far as if you're in America, so that's that's my opinion on federations that I think should be the main things. All right, next one. If you had to choose one training partner for your whole life, who would it be? From Tyrone Ghetto Goblin. Oh, I can't even think of anybody, honestly. Like, I prefer to kind of like do my own thing. Um, I actually, training partner wise, if Kelly's there watching me or in the same room or whatever, I tend to do better. But there's no one I really would want to like train with. I'm not really like a training partner kind of guy. Um, 
I train around people, but I don't really train with people, if that makes sense. So that's not really a thing for me uh, that interests me. Number five, does Kelly have kids? And if so, what's it like having them in your life? And do you get along from Harrison to Vecha? Yes, she has kids. Um, and we do get along. Everything's pretty fine, honestly. Uh, when I was on trend for like the first two years of the relationship, that made everything tougher. But honestly, I've been with her for four years, so we're at a really good point now where uh, it's just, I'm used to being around her kids. It's no big deal. And she has her kids half the time, and then her ex has the kids the other half of the time. So it's just something I'm used to. It's just a part of my life now. And it's, it's something I never would have envisioned many years ago. But I'm like 28 now. I've matured. I've gotten older. And it's really... I'm at a good place in life. Like, I'm happy with my life. I'm happy with how things are. So, yeah, we get along. Everything's great. No complaints there. Number seven. Is the road to a 1,000-pound deadlift still going like Larry Wheels from Randy Lee? And somebody else asked a similar question as far as uh, if I'm still planning to ever deadlift 1,000 pounds. And honestly, I don't know because just like I talked about with that first question, training pulls don't really interest me. And I don't think I'm ever going to pull 1,000 pounds in a meet, in a competition. So it's like that's less of my priority. My priority is to pull 900 in a meet, if I'm being honest. I'd way rather pull 900 plus on calibrated plates under meet conditions than 1,000 pounds in the gym. That's just my preference now. I think meat numbers are what matters. I don't care at all about gym lifts. So that's the big thing for me. Um, and then question that sort of ties into this, number eight, what are your thoughts on the Larry Wheels situation from Horsepower? Um, so this kind of was before Larry came back out with his version of things. People were asking this obviously because his ex had just put the video out and he kind of cleared his name with the video. Um, it's he said, she said, I'm sure certain things weren't ideal, certain things didn't go properly between them, but I can't fault, given what we know, I can't fault the guy. We don't know anything, there's no police reports. Um, so we gotta kinda give the guy the benefit of the doubt. And I've met Larry, I think I've met him only once actually, but I met him at Boss of Bosses uh, two years ago. And he's a super humble, nice guy, so obviously, uh, Emotions run high sometimes in relationships and if people take trend or whatever, I'm sure that makes it much worse so Fights happen people yell uh, I think everyone would do better if they weren't on trend in relationships, but I don't know if he was or isn't or if he was or was not so that's just uh, hearsay, but I Can't give a real good answer here because we just don't know enough and I'm, I'm carefully tiptoeing around this one if you can tell It's just there's not enough facts out there uh, number nine letrozole versus arimidex for gyno flare-ups from adam taylor so i've gyno is completely genetic basically and i've never encountered it and i think gyno is one of those things that is genetic and you just have to get the surgery to get it removed as far as the tissue if you have it and you could take all the estrogen blockers in the world and you still wouldn't be able to really get rid of it so i've never taken letrozole because it would kill my joints um, Electrozole kills 99% of estrogen, whereas Arimidex is like 80%, 83 or something like that. So I do take Arimidex in very small amounts um, during a cycle like right now to keep my estrogen levels down and keep the bloat off, but that's it. I never take anything besides small doses of Arimidex. And I'm not, if I'm on a cruise or in the off season on very low test, I don't take Arimidex at all because it will kill your estrogen to the point you'll, it'll be a negative thing. So estrogen is one of those tricky things, like you need it to be kind of low, but you don't need it to be too low. You know, it, you've got to find that right range. And you're almost better off having it a little high than too low. That's a misconception. Like if your estrogen is way too low, you're going to feel it and it's not going to feel great. Last question, number 10, what was your all-time favorite meat that you competed in from Alex Sutton? Easy, easy answer here. Raw Unity. I think it was Raw Unity 5 in Florida, in Port St. Lucie, Florida. This was the first, uh, or this was the second big meet I did after Backyard Meet of the Century. This was like uh, four, three, four months later. And I actually flew to the meet from Madison, Wisconsin with John Hack. So my dad picked us up, uh, drove me and John Hack to the airport in Milwaukee. 
actually. We flew out of Milwaukee, flew into West Palm Beach. Uh, we took an hour taxi ride to Port St. Lucie. And I was basically, John Hack, John Hack and I, that was our first, uh, our first big meet. Or, I mean, that was my second big meet. That was his first big meet. And that meet was freaking awesome. I loved that meet. Uh, that was the days when Dan Green was like killing all the records. People were standing up on chairs to film Dan Green when he hit that 783 squat at 220. Uh, Cade Weber was there, Garrett Griffin, um, Kevin Oak. That was the first time I ever heard of Kevin Oak too. Like I was like, who's this guy, Kevin Oak, freaking beast. Carlos Reyes, that's when his nose was pouring blood. Um, oh gosh, it was a fun time. There were a lot of good lifters at that one. That one was like some of the OG lifters who aren't around as much anymore. Uh, Jay Nero was there, freaking awesome crew. Oh man, I loved Florida. That was my first time going to Florida. I was like, this place is freaking awesome. And I honestly wish there were more big meets in that Florida area than in California. Cause like I've done a bunch of meets in California and California's cool, but like I wish there were more meets in, uh, in Florida. And I know there's the hybrid meet in Miami, so maybe someday, but that was the freaking best meet ever for me. I had a blast. Um, I've done boss of bosses, record breakers in California. Uh, done a bunch of meets out there, but Raw Unity, that first meet, oh man, I loved it. It was a blast. And you can find bit footage of that on my, my YouTube here. Um, I pulled 788 Bellless, and I was bloated out of my mind, dude. That was actually when my acne was the worst ever. I had freaking acne all over my arms, upper back. I was terribly unhealthy from the trend. Um, felt like crap. I was bloated out of my mind. Uh, just horrific feeling. But that was that was a great time. So that's it as far as the Q and A. And like it, subscribe, all the things. Appreciate it, guys.